Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, again, coming to you from my mobile office here. We're going to kind of walk through the TXA guideline here now. I've got another video that should be up kind of going through an overview of the uh, updated trauma guidelines. And we touch uh, base a little deeper on kind of our approach to hemorrhagic shock there. Uh, in addition, we're going to be doing a webinar that will be put up on YouTube as well that really dives in more to the kind of the the whys uh, of, of why we use TXA in hemorrhagic shock. So I, I would, you know, hope that you all take a little bit of time to kind of review that uh, so you have a little bit better understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. Um, a lot of this, this video is just going to be kind of going through the major overview of our TXA guidelines specifically. So um, when we talk about our management of hemorrhagic shock, uh, the couple of things that we've tweaked is to really encourage a permissive hypotension. So that's basically, you know, in the past we've given a bunch of fluids and what we found is that's probably leading to some bad outcomes down the line. So we're really trying to restrict the amount of IV fluids we give, focus on getting to a trauma center, getting uh, blood uh, uh, resuscitation started, um, and, you know, kind of aiming for those that blood pressure in the uh, 80s range on these patients. Um, so, you know, again, re review the hemorrhagic shock guideline to kind of get a little bit clearer picture of that. But essentially, you know, in these patients that are bleeding, we're going to use TXA to try and decrease the amount of bleeding. And it does a very good job of that. And again, I would encourage you to kind of review uh, the, the webinar video once we get it posted uh, to kind of go through the, the, the hows and whys of TXA. But essentially within that hemorrhagic shock guideline, if, if that patient is significantly hypotensive, we're going to go ahead and give TXA fairly liberally. Now, the inclusion criteria that we're using is basically you have to have a situation that's consistent with bleeding. So, you know, sometimes this is fairly obvious if they're pouring out black stools, vomiting up blood, uh, or if you've got a major, you know, uh, uh, injury and that can be external bleeding potentially, but most of the time when we think about this, this is going to be your trunk injuries, your abdominal bleeding, your liver lacerations, you know, potentially chest injuries. So somebody who's got a fairly high mechanism with, you know, outward signs of, you know, likely internal injury. Um, and what we're really looking for are the, here on this left side of the inclusion criteria, are signs of hypoperfusion. So you're not getting blood flow like you should. And, and that can be directly with, you know, your vital signs, but it can just be, a, you know, signs where your body's clamping down your blood vessels to force that blood, you know, in, into your vital organs. I mean, we are, you know, we see this with all sorts of shock as we're, as, you know, as far as cool skin modeling, you know, decreased pulses, things like that. And really it's, you know, there, there's two things. It's, you know, if you're hypotensive, so a systolic blood pressure less than 90 or significantly tachycardic, you know, so a, a heart rate of greater than 120, those are kind of our two, you know, vital sign, you know, triggers to make you think that you probably should be giving TXA. Um, one, you know, caveat to that here is, you know, is in older people. Uh, they may not have the initial hypotensive response. So if you've got someone greater than 64 with, you know, who's got concern for that bleeding and their uh, blood pressure is less than 110, that is also an indication. Exclusion criteria, there's really only two that are probably, you know, going to be important on most every patient. And that's basically anybody who's had an injury greater than three hours, there's actually evidence that TXA can make those patients worse. Um, again, very rarely we're going to be on scene, you know, uh, after three hours, but you got someone who's found in the woods, found on the floor, uh, and you don't have a start time, that would, you know, that, that would be a time when we don't want to use TXA. Um, and the second thing is just pediatrics. So age less than 16 for right now, we're not using TXA, although there's some push, especially in Europe, and some emerging evidence that I, I suspect that in the future we will use TXA uh, in our pediatric population. Uh, the only other exclusion criteria is a known hypersensitivity or allergic reaction to TXA. The likelihood of that being known is, you know, almost zero, I imagine. Uh, and really, the, the, the one thing that I, I, I would, you know, consider, you know, is if you've got a patient who you're thinking may be having a STEMI, 
you know, maybe having a stroke. Again, anything that you're worried about, a clotting problem in addition to the bleeding problem, you, sh you should, you know, uh, either, you know, consider not using it, talk with med control, talk through it. But most of the patients that we're going to be using those are fairly straightforward. They're going to be our MBAs, our, our you know, high energy type trauma mechanisms. Um, so ho hopefully, you know, in, in an adult, most of the time, you're really going to be worried just about your uh, um, uh, blood pressure and your heart rate as the main criteria. Uh, as far as the TXA itself, it's very simple dosing. It's one gram or 1,000 milligrams should be coming in a vial. And the biggest thing is you want to dilute that in a bag of, of, of saline. 100, 250, 500, um, you know, whatever you carry on the truck. Put the gram of TXA in the, the bag of, of saline and run it in over 10 to 15 minutes. Because really the major side effect of TXA is, is uh, hypotension because it's pushed too fast. Um, that's basically it. Uh, if there's questions, let me know and uh, I'll be happy to try and answer them. Um, but again, this is something that has very good evidence behind it to help decrease mortality and decrease bleeding in our trauma patients. So, as always, get a hold of me with questions and stay safe.